Okay, so I'll put this back on speaker view. And again, so in terms of Q&A, uh, let me find my, the, oh, there we go, I have to scroll up. You can raise your hand in Zoom using Option Y on Mac or Alt Y on Windows. Again, that's Option Y on Mac or Alt Y on Windows. So it, it was interesting, Ted. I, so the, I, I noticed you had the spinning disc on the armature, and it was going around, right, turning to the right. you know clockwise. And right. I did. I saw once it rose above, then that spin reversed. Well, it, it's not it's not something you can see. Uh, if you just like you would do in your hand, if you take your finger and point it towards the floor, all right. As as silly as this may sound, if you just do your finger in a swirl like I'm doing. Okay. Keep your arm going like that. Notice that whatever direction you're going, clockwise, let's say. Yeah. Now, just keep your arm going like that and point upward. Keep your arm going. What direction are you going? Hmm. Op opposite, right? I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Whatever force this... Uh, are happening to the gyroscope when it's at its lowest position, all right, uh, let's say a processional pivot, all right, it, part of that forces are because of the direction of rotation. Once it gets up to the top, mine is rotating in the same direction. No, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it, it is rotating in the same direction because it's on the spindle. All right, so if, you, if your hand was on that spindle and you got inverted and whatnot, what you saw in the video of the other uh, mechanism would not happen with mine. That is why the gy my gyro disc is split in two pieces like that. Mm, okay, okay. It's, it's something to think about because it's not so obvious, but if it wasn't happening, then when the gyro disc is totally inverted, whatever gyro forces had occurred down at the lower part of its orbit, the counter forces would be applied up at the top part of its orbit. Okay. Yeah, it's it's you've got a lot. Once I get this, I mean, again, Jeremy Reese has this. This comes out live on his channel. With ours, I have to process this, and then I, I'll, <laughs> I'll upload it to ours. Yes, it's a lot going on that's not obvious. For instance, what I described to you is a two to one ratio between the motors. Once you get that settled in your head, start thinking about what happens at an eight to one ratio. I mean, you, you can imagine the geometry of it, but what happens to the forces, are, you know, it's, it's not linear uh, uh, differences. But yeah. What about, what about questions here? Yeah. Well, so let me go to Ross Small. Let, let me go to Ross. Ross, go for it, sir. I can't hear him. No, nope, no. Nope. Uh, let me see. Okay, so you were trying to unmute. There me we go. Yeah. While the, same, while the same time I was trying to unmute myself. Okay. Yeah. That. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, Ted. Remember Hello, me as Ross. Ross. Hi. How you been, man? You know, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. good. It's Ross Small. Remember? Yes. We we met. Yeah. Well, we talked a lot on via email. Yeah. Yeah. Email. Yeah. Yeah, Cougar RCS NDA is my is, is my email. Cougar RT RCS NDA. RCS. Okay. Yeah. It's been a while though. Um so um I noticed how you said that you when you patented it, you had to kind of call it a um a learning aid sort of to, to kind of overcome the challenges with the patent office. Yeah, because because you know they're claiming that it's breaking the laws of physics and all this that and the other. Yeah, um, would you say that that's like in the future for others that are trying to do the same thing that are trying to patent? Would that be a good tactical Absolutely. strategic Absolutely. move? Absolutely. I looked at an earlier patent. It was either a Gush or a Fela. It was one of them, I think. You know, Harvey they, Fela. Okay, they had been rejected. Uh, their patent or at least they had made one attempt before they got the uh, patent. And they also made it into a teaching device. So when I saw that they did that with the same hardware as be, that was rejected and they got it passed, that's what I did. There's absolutely no change in my hardware from my earlier attempt to my uh, actual uh, 
uh, patent patented uh, device. The so patent office, they're, they're rough. I'm telling you, really. I can imagine. I mean, because you know, me and my, me and a, another friend, um, Brian St. Clair, we're looking at patenting. Um, I remember I mentioned Mike Marsden's Macwan One to you. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of times, yeah. So we're kind of working on something that's along the lines of that as well. Okay. Um, so we want to have a kind of maybe get with you and kind of see if maybe you can kind of guide us, help us a little bit with that so we don't have any roadblocks ourselves. Um, I'd be uh, glad to help you. And one thing I can tell you right now, unless you're an expert, do not patent it yourself. You end up spending more money and more time going back and forth with the patent office. And each one of those applications and, and uh, amendments cost money. Yeah, I was. We were going to hire an attorney to actually Absolutely. affirm to have yeah. to do that because, um, yeah, like I'm I imagine. I, I obviously we'd want someone to draw the drawings and all that stuff and write up the the synopsis for it. And, um, but yeah, we, yeah. we basically we call your machine a um a spiral Mac One One. Ah, okay. You you noticed the spiral part? I didn't mention that word. Yeah, it's like a funnel. We, we you know, um, yeah, so yeah. You're, you're sort of funneling up, like you're, you're, you know, you're. I guess you were calling like you're, um, you were showing the Russian guys where his just pivots up, right? Um, so I, I think yours is you're you're trying to do something where you're spiraling the energy up, so the machine ends up going up. It's very astute. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks, man. I'll email you okay. here soon. Okay, yeah, uh, keep in touch and uh, I'll be glad to help you out with the patent and, and give you some direction on that. Wonderful, okay. wonderful. And, and thanks for the, the book as well, The Monkey Bars of Life is a good book. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't mention that, uh, Tim. I, I uh, wrote a book, uh, it's an autobiographical book actually. And uh, oh, I guess maybe 20% of it is about uh, my development of my experimenting before I, uh, 2013, when I got really serious about developing uh, the impulse driver. Ah, okay. The monkey bars of life. Is, can people yes. get that on Amazon or? Yes, and there's a website for it too. Okay, okay. Um, Kindle edition is available. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I, uh, okay. Uh, you know what, let me, let me Google that now. The monkey bars. Monkey bars is one word. Ah, here we go. Okay. And I'm going to drop a link right into chat on this. Okay. But let me, let me make it clear. It's only about 20% uh, or less of the book is about uh, the impulse driver. Okay. okay. It's not a, it's not a technical book. It's a novel. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, I, I think it's still valuable to put in there though, you know, and okay. you're sharing your experience and your thoughts and your opinions. So I think there's a lot of value. Yeah. Okay, um, well, let, let me go to Harold Tabaras next. Harold, come for it, sir. Oh, hey, great presentation, thank you. And uh, yeah, my sympathy to you for all the hard time the patent office gave you because I went through the same thing myself. Uh. But uh, I noticed, you know, there's a lot of patents, you know, that you have to go through. And yeah. I noticed one thing, one of those is mine. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, the what is your last name? <coughs> what is your last name? Tavares. T A V A R E Z. It's a 2005. It's toward the middle on page two, and uh, the initial proportion engine in which uh, it rotate a spin. You know more like yes. this. What I did, I put a motor on the bottom and a motor on top, and yes. then with an arm, with a weight, and then. The, the motor in the bottom is spinning one direction. The motor on top is spinning the way in the other direction. And let me yeah. tell you one thing. It was a demon. It was a devil to make it work because, my God, you know, so many vibrations. It was dangerous. You know, I yeah. abandoned it because I said, you know what? But I noticed one thing. Uh, your machine is good because you can discovered you know what other point the optimum point to produce thrust and uh, 
variable uh, radios and so on, because I, I plug for five of them, which I abandoned after I spent so much money, because they always yeah. tell you, oh, violin Newton third law. Anyway, but uh, uh, what kind of net throws are you producing with your machine? With that one? Milton. No. Mm. Frozen. Yeah, I think Ted. I think Ted's Wi-Fi signal kind of comes in and out. But oh, on my end. Yeah, I. You know, and that that's okay. I. It, oh. it happens. It happens to everybody. You know, every now and then. I. I just appreciate you joining us and sharing all this with us. Yeah. Let me see here. Oh, the exact answer to your question, uh, the last reading that uh, I got was 738 uh, milli, milli newtons. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's good amount right there. And, and I do want I do want to say this though. You were talking about the uh, the reaction of your motors, and it was very chaotic and whatnot. That's yeah. a good reason to use stepper motors. With mm. stepper motors, you can control it, and also you can get be repeatable the next time you test. You mm -hmm. know. Well, and, and they stopped very fast too, stepper motors. No, well, yeah, back then, you know, uh, I just did a quick test, you know, more like what I did was I applied for the patent first, was a mistake, and then I made the experiment. And then it was a living hell, and I realized, you know what, I could have done differently. And I noticed in yours, uh, you seem to have solved the problem of the vibration, See, I mean, yours is not smooth then because I saw the video on YouTube also, the other video, and uh, it's quite good, you know, the look like you're operating a very smooth, you know, almost yeah, vibration yeah. free at some point. But uh, column 17 on your patent, uh, you have the equation for the uh, centripetal force, F equal yes. MB squared over R. Now, yes. uh, what uh, forces are you calculating when uh, the motor on the bottom is uh, spinning in one, the velocity, the angular velocity in one direction, and then the other on top is the angular of spinning on the other direction. What are the, uh, the net velocity that you get out of that? And number two, uh, the gyroscope, how does that affect the gyroscope component? Because it seems to me like uh, your thrust is coming more from the gyroscope component down from the spinning in two directions. Well, yes, it's, it's coming from the gyroscope component and uh, the force is being measured by the uh, load cell scale down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the force is, uh, you know, on the whole device. Uh, the mathematics of it, we're looking at the center of gravity or center of mass of the uh, gyro disc itself. Mm -hmm. It seems to me like the key of the forces what the gyroscope produces because you have an input from gravity that is creating inertial forces on the spinning gyroscope. And at the same time, you're spinning in the both direction. And my second question, why do you choose to make it in two different directions spinning? Okay, uh, I'm glad you asked that. Initially, uh, like, like you say, I, I, uh, you thought of, oh, oh, let me say this before I answer your question, because sometimes I'm forgetful. And uh, to the person just before you, the thing to do is first get a provisional patent. A provisional patent is almost free. It's very, very cheap. You don't have to be real technical about mm -hmm. it. You can make hand drawings and whatnot, but it establishes a date for you. Mm -hmm. And then you have 365 days to do a formal patent, you know, with the patent attorney and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. But when you uh, are granted the patent itself, you'll have that earlier date. Yet there's no, they, they don't even open the provisional patent unless there's some legal reason to do it, but you have that date, okay? Mm -hmm. But back to your question about, uh, the, uh, <laughs> what was it now? <laughs> okay, I'm asking, you know, it was uh, when, you're spinning. Oh, like why do I spin, spin two motors? Yes. Okay. My initial thought was this. 
if you just take a still drawing of the side of my unit, okay? Uh -huh. You see the gyroscope down there and you see yes. the spindle. Mm -hmm. All right, in your mind, if you just move it slowly all the way over to the left temporarily, mm -hmm. all right? So now you see the spindle is tilted 20 degrees and you see the gyroscope is hanging down like a bell on a Christmas tree, right? Yes. Now, if we move this like a pendulum from the left side to the right side, if we move it quickly, your mind will show that the gyroscope will pivot just because we moved quickly. The center of mass of that gyroscope hanging down tries to keep going, right? Yeah, yeah you have you a lot of inertial forces too on the gyroscope when you're spinning very right, fast. Right, but, and this is, just, this is just two dimensional right across the sheet of paper. Right. You're starting on the left side and uh -huh. you move quickly to the right side and the, mm -hmm. and the gyro disc kicks out and pivots, mm -hmm. okay? But now, if it's only two dimensional the way I used to have it and everything, you, you have to take that energy and turn it all the way back around the other way. Now, when you're coming back the other way, if you're fast enough, the gyro disc is still pivoted the way I just described and you're moving to the left now or to the other side quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's trailing behind you. So now, when the spindle stops, it can only go so far, the gyro mm -hmm. disc is gonna pivot a whole 180 degrees, right? It tries mm -hmm. to kick outward. Okay, yeah. so that's a two dimensional version of this. Uh -huh. When you do three dimensional and go around in a circle, uh, it helps to have the motor on the top part because that will position the gyroscope to either pivot or not pivot. With my machine, if it does not pivot, then the gyro disc would just stay, if it's mm -hmm. not pivoting back and forth, what would happen, the gyro disc would just stay pointing outward just like uh -huh. normal centrifugal force, like a merry-go-round, yes. would just be going around, always pivoted outward, nice and smooth and quiet and so on. But the upper motor is on purpose, turns the gyroscope so that when it's on 180 degrees from a positive pivot, now uh -huh. it's moved 180 degrees to the other side, the motor up on top turns the gyroscope on the spindle so that it mechanically cannot pivot. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. If you think about the design, right, it can yeah. depict one way, but 90 degrees from that, it cannot pivot. And that's mm -hmm. the synchronization. When I talked about resonance, when you were looking at the plots and it was running, that's mm -hmm. the resonance that we want. We always want the upper motor, regardless of the speed of the bottom motor or in, 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 in the right ratio with the bottom motor, to keep the gyro disc pivoting oppositely on, let's say, the other side of its orbit when we have the top view. You, you with me? Yes, yes. One side it can pivot out, on the other side it's restricted from yeah. pivoting outward. So you yeah. get a pulse up on one side yeah. and the other side you don't. The, the other thing- an original solution because you're combining centrifugal force, centripetal force, the gyroscope, yeah. all yes. that, you know, and you are creating yes. something, uh, different physics there. Now, now the, the, the last, thing in it, because you guys have really figured this out with the spiral and, and your uh, understanding as well. The last thing, let's go back to a two-dimensional thing, okay? Uh -huh. You got the spindle 20 degrees sitting there. You got the gyro disc sitting like a bell on a Christmas tree, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just turn on the upper motor only, uh -huh. all right? It's spinning. So now the gyro disc is, is spinning, but it's not moving across. It's just spinning around the spindle, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay, so it is a gyroscope, you know, by classical definition. Yes. We bring, we bring it across to the other side. It's still a gyroscope. It's just spinning like a normal gyroscope. But now it's going to start to pivot just like before, just because it's spinning doesn't prevent it from pivoting. But if you think about what's happening now, it's no longer centered on the spindle. Mm -hmm. Now it's kicking outward. It's no longer a gyroscope. It, it is what I showed you from Steve Hampton. It's mm -hmm. like that ball sticking out the side. Remember? Yeah. So it is an eccentric mass now. And that's mm -hmm. what's giving that vertical push. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the gyroscope spins it around. As a matter of fact, it's exactly like this. And I described this in my pattern. It's like a... Uh, hammer throw in, in the Olympics, the guy that mm -hmm. throws the discus, right? Mm -hmm. 
He it spins around happen. and spins around and then he releases it and lets it go. Hmm. My gyro disc is spinning around as it comes across, but then when it starts to pivot, it's no longer a gyroscope. Now it's just an eccentric mass mm -hmm. and it's throwing that mass upward. Okay. okay. And the, it's, there's a couple of other little mechanical things there, but you know, I, I've been criticized by people that say it's only pivoting on the axle. And my answer is this, let's take an instantaneous fo photo of it while it's pivoting. All right. So it's up uh -huh. past 90 degrees. It's, go it's going up. We take a photo. All right. All right, you can say it's torquing, yes. But in order to torque, in order to say that it's canceling out on the other side because it's torquing, there would have to be a weight on the other side of the axle. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, okay. if we look at it right from the axle while it's pivoting, you have the whole disc sticking out to that R2 distance. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the axle at that moment, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is talking around the axle, but mm -hmm. it's not being counterbalanced by something on the other side. Mm -hmm. It would have to have some point halfway out uh, on the on the disc. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but so you are using a variable radio on one side. Uh, part of the orbit for the gyroscope is the mass is working as a gyroscope, and the other half of the orbit look is now working as a gyroscope. Is that kind of a because you are, you half of the uh, is no longer the gyroscope in half of the orbit. Is that right. how you uh, put it? Yeah, th think of it as down at the bottom part of its orbit with the side view. Mm -hmm. Think of it as for 90 degrees. Okay, this is not true, but think of it this way. For 90 degrees down at the bottom part, it's a gyroscope. Uh -huh. 180 degrees from that, when it's at the top part, it's a gyroscope because it's spinning concentrically around the spindle. Mm -hmm. But for the other 90 degrees and the 270 degrees on the sides, it's, it's revolving around the spindle. It's not a gyroscope, it's a weight out there. Yeah, centrifugal okay. for, pure centrifugal force on that Right, one. right. And the other one, gyroscope plus centrifugal force. Hey, yep. Thank you, that was a great explanation, a good machine there. Yeah, that would it, be a good teaching aid too because the one can do a lot of experiment to find where are the zeros, where are you know the, the positive throws to maximize it, you know, optimum performance, yes. all those things, you know. Huh? Very, yes. good, very ingenious. Well, thank you. It, thank you. <laughs> it took quite a while, quite a while. For yeah. for years, people have been telling me that uh, you know it it wouldn't give any net lifting force, that everything would cancel out and it would just you know, be bouncing up and coming down the same amount. But uh, that's not true. I'll tell you something that had been a secret, but I'm revealing things now and showing videos and so on. In one sense, it's like a child on a playground swing, right? The swing, you know, uh, uh, we, we boys, we stand up, you know, and we pump the swing and go back and forth, or you can sit down and so on. But, uh, and I mentioned this in the pattern, it's, it's like that. I want you to think about this. If the playground swing, instead of having the chains on both sides, were just metal rods, okay? And if the playground swing, the support for it was not bolted to the ground, all right? And somebody is swinging very, very hard, swinging, swinging, and we know it would be moving a little bit on the ground because what would happen if he swung all the way up and over and around rapidly, up and over all the way, what, what would we see? What do you think? Can't see you. you yeah, your, your signal went out again, but it okay. looks like you're back now. Okay. Uh, uh, what, what, and Tim also, I asked the question to anybody, uh, what would you see if a swing had metal rods on, on a support and it was not bolted to the ground and some big brute just got on there and swung all the way up and around, what would you see? What do you think? If, if it had metal rod, you know, I, I'm having trouble visualizing it, but it's, it's that time of the day. I need to get some more coffee. I think it would bounce upward from the ground. 
the, when you got, when you get in a swing, you push down hard to go forward, and then you release your feet. You go up and over and everything. Isn't there a centrifugal force or angular momentum pulling you upward at that point? Where did it go? Sure. You haven't sure. stopped moving. Yeah, and then no, I, I, I get I'll, what you're saying. I'll conclude with this. Suppose it's connected to an asteroid down at the bottom, a small asteroid. And when you swing like I just described, you get a small upward push. I think they're going to call it asteroid uh, tugboats. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I could take it with you. Yeah. 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 Well, Ted, on that note, actually, it's 431. So we're at the bottom of the hour. So that I think that's good. Sir, I, I want to personally thank you so much for presenting today. I, I, this thank was you. tremendous, tremendous. Thank you. Uh, and I, I want to put this back on gallery also and have everyone give an applause for Mr. Ted Pittman. Okay. Ted, thank you so much. And I know we, we had to dodge internet connectivity issues and, you know, all, all sorts of little things. But thank you for hanging in there and presenting and answering questions. It was wonderful to have you. It okay. was wonderful to have you. Mark, Mark uh, uh, is planning on coming out to my uh, lab uh, soon. And I'll do another video uh, once he comes out there and I'll run the machine. Yeah, okay. And it looks, yeah, and it looks like Mark, actually, I just, checked looks like mark is not online right now but i know there was some conference things going on there um so we we could do a couple of different things uh in terms of let me see i i guess i'll open it up and ask see what the audience wants 